subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Hello viewers I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus let's begin the show as covid-19 pandemic has crossed the 15 million mark across the globe countries around the world have upped their efforts considerably to contain the spread of the virus India has been consistently working on developing a robust infrastructure that could help it in present and in future The World Health Organization feels that India can deal with the situation despite registering rapid rises every day. The world has not been able to take its eyes off the pandemic for even a day in over past 4 months. The countries have optimized all their energy and resources into containing the health crisis which has not only rendered a massive economic blow to the world but has claimed over 630,000 lives too. From health experts to each single individual in the affected countries now holds a responsibility in the global fight against the pandemic. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi says his country has tried to make the fight against coronavirus pandemic a people's movement. The COVID-19 pandemic has severely tested the resilience of all nations. In India, we have tried to make the fight against the pandemic a people's movement by combining the efforts of government and civil society India's premier all india institute of medical sciences that is aims hospital initiated a plasma donation drive in collaboration with delhi police Plasma is a component which once extracted from blood and separated from the red blood cells can be used to treat the patients with weaker immunity. A few plasma donation banks too have been floated to extract the plasma from recovered patients. जो हम ट्रीटमेंट अभी दे रहे हैं कोविड का ज्यादातर सपोर्टेड ट्रीटमेंट है उसमें जो कन्वर्सेंट प्लाज्मा है जो जो लोग ठीक हो गए उनका जो प्लाज्मा है उसकी हम जांच करते हैं और अगर उसमें एंटीबॉडीज़ हैं जो वायरस को मार सकती हैं तो वो प्लाज्मा जब हम किसी व्यक्ति जो कोविड से सफ़र कर रहा है उसको दें तो ये एक माध्यम है जिससे हम कुछ हद तक और दवाइयों के साथ कोविड की लड़ाई में पेशेंट की जान बचा सकते हैं While a simple look at the Indian graph of COVID-19 might induce panic, the critical analysis suggests breakthroughs and a positive deviation. Doctors at India's largest hospital treating coronavirus patients said they were largely successful at handling the crisis and were prepared for a second wave of the virus. we have prepared we have the enough number of icu beds we have enough number of uh, uh, semi icus and uh, hdu beds we have enough number of uh, uh, oxygen beds so we can manage even if we have the largest number and second wave comes then we have very excellent facility very good facility and we are prepared for that mm-hmm. 
the hospital has been at the forefront of Delhi's fight against the pandemic, having treated over 6,000 patients suffering from the COVID-19 disease caused by the novel coronavirus. Meanwhile, the Government of India has instructed that no school children will participate in the Independence Day celebrations this year. At the Red Fort, instead of the 900 to 1000 invitees every year, around 250 people will be present as the Prime Minister addresses the nation. In view of the everyday spike, India has also cancelled the Amarnath pilgrimage in which around 600,000 pilgrims go to cave shrine of Hindu Lord Shiva in Himalayas in its Union territory of Kashmir. While the centre says it will push for aggressive testing to reduce everyday positive count, individual states have taken calls in their citizens' interest. While some have once again gone for the sweeping lockdowns, few others have instructed for the weekly lockdowns. Moving on, with the rapid expansion of deadly coronavirus, the race to acquire ventilators, a key medical equipment required to treat the seriously affected patients, has picked pace. However, due to its high cost and low production around the world, the South Asian countries have found it hard to meet the real needs. In such a scenario, the citizens have stepped up and are coming up with cheap, homemade ventilators as an alternative. A report. A team of high school girls in Afghanistan's western city of Herat have built a prototype ventilator that they believe will ramp up their country's fight against deadly pandemic, which has already claimed over 1,200 lives. Mostly based on a design from portable ventilator developed by Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the ventilator will cost as low as $700 against $20,000 for a traditional ventilator. خب امیر خان کی میفهمیم امروز کرونا ویروس کرونا تبدیل شده به یک آفت جهانی و مردم در سراسر جهان به دنبال راهی هستند که این ویروس از بین بره و بیشتر مریضایی هم که به خاطر این ویروس از بین میرم اینه که تنفس از اونا نمیتونم تنفس کنم به خاطر همین ما تصمیم گرفتیم ای دسکار به افغانستان هم ما بسازیم چون ای دسکار نه تنها در افغانستان بلکه در تمام جهان کم بوده و ما امیدواریم با ساخت ای دسکار و چند بار تست کردن از ای دسکار وقتی که به درستی کار داد بتونیم در شفاخانه ها استفاده کنیم و یک خدمتی هم در سیطه با توابب به کشور خواب کنیم The final design of the ventilator prototype was unveiled at a ceremony on July 13th, but still needs to undergo testing before it can be put to use. Currently, Afghanistan has around 800 ventilators and none of them was made inside the country. Government says it will share the design with WHO once the ventilators are rolled out in hospitals. Earlier, an Indian startup too had come up with the cheap ventilators for the exclusive treatment of COVID patients. The Indian company claims of delivering a ventilator in a cost nearly seven times cheaper with its cost a little over $2,000 against the traditional cost ranging between $13,000 to $20,000. ये फुल फ्लेजेड आईसीयू वेंटिलेटर है पूरी तरीके से आईसीयू में इस्तेमाल किए जाने वाला वेंटिलेटर बना रही है इसके अंदर अलग अलग मॉडल्स भी है अभी जो हम वेंटिलेटर बना रहे हैं वो कोविड स्पेसिफिक है यानी कोविड के पेशेंट के लिए स्पेशली डिजाइन किया गया है करेंटली इंडिया हैज अराउंड 30000 टू 50000 वेंटिलेटर्स द कंट्री हैज एस्केलेटेड इंपोर्ट सिंस द आउटब्रेक बट its affordability has become a challenge for a commoner. 
in such a scenario the cheap ventilators can boost the morale of a patient India's neighbor Pakistan where the number of ventilators is 3800 has also claimed of indigenously producing ventilators its prime minister had recently inaugurated 12 ventilators in a facility which promise to produce hundreds of more in coming times A World Health Organization report had recently said that Pakistan has the swiftest rate of infections in the world. Moving on to Balochistan, the largest and the resource-rich province of Pakistan, which has been torn apart by decades of civil strife with locals demanding political and economic autonomy. Baloch say Pakistan has systematically stifled voices that tried resisting its military and material campaigns in the region. They have been carrying out protests world over to educate the international community about what they call a state manufactured humanitarian crisis in Balochistan. <laughs> These men and women demonstrating outside 10 Downing Street in London and shouting slogans against Pakistan and China are the Baloch, an ethnic community in Pakistan. The floats they are holding have the name and picture of Bramsh, a four-year-old infant who had become the face of widespread anti-Pakistan protests in and outside Balochistan after her mother was killed by infamous death squad in southwestern region of the province on 26th of May. They have gathered here seeking support of the international community in their campaign against what they call Pakistan's recalibrated campaigns against Baloch, under which they do not spare even women and children. They are trying to force the uh, local population uh, to either to leave their houses, their villages, uh, to migrate somewhere else or uh, to get killed at the end of Pakistan army and their death squad. The Balochis call Pakistan an occupier and they have been demanding sovereignty. They say the Pakistan army and spy agencies, the ISI and military intelligence have been carrying out genocide to muzzle the voices of dissidents. A number of Baloch activists also accuse China of increased violence in the region. They say Pakistan, which is in the mass of Chinese debts, wants to pay Chinese back through land and resources. And hence, it is following both Chinese suggestions and instructions in the best of spirit. Pakistan has completely cleansed villages and territories that created obstructions in China's flagship project of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. As per Baloch accounts, state-sponsored violence, abductions, torture, killings have become a new normal in Balochistan. Around 53,000 Baloch have disappeared till date. Some under suspicious conditions, some in broad daylight. The state has spared women and children. Discovery of mass graves speak volumes about the treatment they are given after being picked. They want to frighten the whole Baloch community by killing uh, innocent Baloch women, attacking houses, so uh, that people feel insecure. Once people feel insecure, they think uh, the people will ask Pakistani army to come and uh, <coughs> establish the security of the region, but they are wrong. Baloch people know all these 
death squad people are supported, packed exactly from ISI centers. They are Pakistani goons. Baloch say they have resorted to a multi-pronged strategy to reclaim their rights and honor. However, with little political support and limited resources at hand, they say only international intervention can help their movement gain strength. Moving on. The world is seemingly moving towards a new global order, especially after the outbreak of COVID-19 and China's increasingly belligerent attitude towards its neighbors. The Quad has become more cooperative and stronger. Recently, two of its members, India and the United States, committed to further enhance their ties on the sidelines of the India Ideas Summit. While India is seeking investments from across the world, its close allies have called it a reliable investment destination with even better future prospects. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi appealed the countries across the world to invest in India as he promised that New Delhi will provide them one of the most conducive business atmospheres across the world. In a virtual summit that principally focused at the bilateral ties of India and the United States, PM Modi said that India is the destination which the entire world is looking for. India is contributing towards a prosperous and resilient world through the Plarian call of an Atman Nirbhar Bharat. And for that, we await your partnership. Friends, today there is global optimism towards India. This is because India offers a perfect combination of openness, opportunities, and options. Taking an indirect jibe at neighbor China, whose reputation has taken a beating across the world for its anti-people policies and several attempts to secure all-round gains including economic and territorial, Modi said that India celebrates both people and governance. India celebrates openness in people and in governance. Open minds make open markets. Open markets lead to greater prosperity. The second most populous country and the largest democratic state, India, is speculated to attract even more FDI this year after China lost its credibility at multiple fronts. China, whose FDI inflows had declined last year, is expected to receive a further blow this time. And it is not just about its alleged complicity in the spread of COVID-19 pandemic, but also its immoral objectives of gaining intellectual property rights and technology that have cautioned other countries. And India is said to be the beneficiary with its allies expected to invest more and a host of new partners likely to join in. The ties between the United States and India have grown deeper, with India becoming the key US defence market consumer and a trustworthy ally in the Indo-Pacific, where China has been wielding strength against many smaller nations. A major and comprehensive trade deal between the two countries is also in the pipeline and as per the government of India, it can become a reality at any time in coming times. The relationship now covers the entire spectrum 
of issues, defense, counterterrorism, nuclear nonproliferation, trade, investment, energy, the environment, health, education, agriculture, uh, science and technology, space, the oceans, and so much more. And inevitably, it's, it's a matured and maturing relationship. India has been looking for some major economic investments after its economy, just like other countries in the world, took a hit due to pandemic. Tech giants Google and Apple have already announced major investments in India in recent times. Facebook too has made major investment in Indian companies. And now with global orders set to come up with new arrangements and combinations, New Delhi is being dubbed as the prospective center of investment in coming times. Moving on. While Pakistani laws of governance are known to all, its ways of engagement with the people in illegally occupied regions of POK and Gilgit Baltistan are intimidating and marginalizing. While it didn't care to enforce the WHO guidelines on influential people of Punjab, the same authorities have denied locals of Gilgit Baltistan their right to employment. The hoteliers, who have been out of business for nearly eight months, protested against both Islamabad and its stooges in the local administration. Have a look. A large number of people associated with the hotel industry in Gilgit Baltistan held a demonstration against the government and demanded reopening of industry. They carried banners with text highlighting their plights. Protesters said they were already surviving on bare minimum and poverty was looming large over them as the authorities had not paid enough attention to their problems. It is not just the lockdown imposed in wake of COVID-19 outbreak that has affected the hoteliers and a large dependent staff in Gilgit, Baltistan. They have been out of business since October, the month which heralds the beginning of the chilly winters in the region and affects the footfall significantly in this tourist hotspot. October se hotels band hai, winter ke wajah se 3-4 mahina band hote hain, uske baad ye fir corona virus ke wajah se ya bhi 4 mahina ho gaya. Band 8 mahina hamara hotels band hai. Jabki ye tourism jo hai hotel industry ek reed ki head ki ehsiyat rakhti hai is ilaqe mein. बहुत सारे लोगों के लिए इसने जो है रोजी का जरिया किया है पैदा और होटल वालों ने इतना करोड़ों रुपया रिस्क लेके हमने जो है होटल्स बनाया और बहुत सारे लोगों को रोजगार दिया अगर ये वबा है तो फिर तो पूरा मुल्क के अंदर कर्फ्यू लगना चाहिए सिर्फ एक होटल इंडस्ट्री को टूरिज्म इंडस्ट्री को बंद करके ये वबा वबा को रोकता है गवर्नमेंट पूरे शहरों के अंदर इतना मतलब एक मास्क भी जो है वो नहीं लगाते हैं होटेलियर्स आर कंसर्न एज टू वॉट इफ इट इज अस्टमेटिक डिजाइन टू फर्दर मार्जिनलाइज द पीपल ऑफ द रीजन प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ पाकिस्तान इमरान खान हु इज करेंटली एट दिल्म ऑफ अफेयर्स रिलेटेड टू दिस इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइड रीजन हैड अनाउंस द रिजम्पन ऑफ द होटल बिजनेस बट दी लोकल अथॉरिटीज हैव नॉट गिवन दी नॉट दिस हाउ एवर हैज बीन एन ओल्ड ट्रिक where the leaders make populist announcements in Islamabad but themselves barricade the action on ground jab se wazir azam sahab ne elan kiya tourism kholne ke ke liye us pe amal kyun nahi ho raha hum hairan hain yahan 70% log tourism se bila wasta ya directly involved hain एक अंडा भी बिकता है तो वो भी टूरिज्म है एक गेस्ट हाउस है ट्रांसपोर्ट है गाइड्स है कुक्स है वर्कर्स है स्टाफ है ये सारी टूरिज्म है तो बाकी खोलना चाहिए गवर्नमेंट के ट्रांसपोर्ट चलते प्राइवेट ट्रांसपोर्ट चलते होटल इंडस्ट्रीज क्यों इसको बंद किया गया है एस ओ पीज के थ्रू The owners say that they have been following the instructions in the interest of common citizens, but that has resulted in accumulation of massive debts. They haven't paid monthly instalments to banks. Now, these people don't have a clue as to where they should go and who should they appeal before. But there is nothing new in this situation. People of Gilgit Baltistan have suffered for more than 7 decades and little or no heed has been paid by any authority. 
People in Gilgit Baltistan have been denied other socio-economic and cultural rights as well in the past. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.